Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I edit a photo from beginning to end. So we're going to be editing this photo back here and I'm going to start by editing the colors and the tone of the image in Lightroom and then showing you how I retouch the photo and add the finishing touches in Photoshop. So let's jump into the computer. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. I am using Lightroom Classic CC and this is the original photo that's straight out of the camera. I use the 50mm at f1.2 at 1 over 640 second of a shutter speed. Um, you can see all the details just up here. And we're going to jump straight into editing this photo. So the first thing that I like to do is edit the colors and the tone of my image in Lightroom. So usually I'll apply a preset to my photo and then depending what it looks like, I will tweak it over here afterwards. So I think for this photo, we're just going to apply the preset for you, which is a free preset that I have available for you to download on my Lightroom preset website. I'll leave a link for that in the description below if you guys want to download this preset as well. And we're going to go from here and use this as a base to be able to tweak and edit our image to look the way that we want it to. So the first thing I'm noticing is that the image is looking a little bit dark. So I'm going to bump up the exposure just a little bit. And bringing up the exposure now, it's sort of brightened up a few sections of the image that look a little bit distracting. So I'm going to bring the highlights down to be able to save that detail. So I think just about there is perfect. Then I also want to sharpen my image. You can kind of see I've missed focus a little bit on the model's eyes. It's still such a nice photo though that I really want to use it. Um, so I'm going to start by bumping up the sharpening here. I like to create a little ladder as you guys know. And then something that you can do with sharpening if you want is use this masking slider. So if you just kind of pull it up and down, you can't really see what it's doing that much. But if you hold down the alt or option key while you're dragging the slider around, as you can see, the white areas of the image is where the sharpening is being applied to. So I think just about there is really good because we'll have most of the sharpening on the model's face. Let's have a look at a before and after of what we've got so far. So this was straight out of the camera and this is with our edits so far. I still think it's looking a little bit cold so I'm going to bump up the temperature just to make our image look a little bit warmer. And I also want to bring the tint down as I would prefer this image to have an overall kind of green tinge to it rather than a pink one. So I'll just kind of slowly tweak each of these sliders here until I'm happy with what it looks like. So I think just about there is good. And I also want to add some split toning to the image just to give it a little bit more color. So split toning is basically when you add a color to the highlights and to the shadows. You can either do one or you can do both. In this case, I really want to focus on the color of the highlights. As you can see, it was a really cold day when we were doing this photo shoot and the model skin in like the highlights area looks a little bit blue. So I'm going to try and alter that a little bit by adding some yellows or oranges into the highlights. So I'm going to start by bringing my saturation up so we can see what it's doing. And then just drag this down into like the orangey yellow section. And then once you're happy with the hue of the highlights, you can then play around with the saturation to make it as subtle or as extreme as you want it to be. I think for me we're going to go for a little bit of a subtle look so I think just about there is good. I will probably leave the shadows the way they are but I do always like to play around just in case there's a really cool color combination that we can use for the split toning. So normally if I have a warm color in the highlights I like to go with a cooler color for the shadows of the image. I think actually this bluey purple area looks really nice. Just very, very subtly. And as you can see, you can see it kind of affecting the shadows of the image. All right, I think that looks really good. I'm just gonna show you a before and after. So that is the original photo, and this is the photo with all our edits so far. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up the photo in Photoshop. 
So the reason why I like to edit in Lightroom first and then retouch in Photoshop is because my Lightroom presets and editing in Lightroom in general is better when you're working on the raw file. The raw file has a lot more information to work with so you can save shadows, save highlights, and just generally push and pull the colors and tone a lot more. Once you open up the image in Photoshop, it's no longer going to be a raw file. So that's why I do it in that order. So in Photoshop is where I like to retouch my images. I like to do really, really natural, minimal retouching as little as possible. Cause I feel like if you do too much retouching, it can make an image look really unnatural and unrealistic. So the method that I use for retouching is frequency separation. And I have a really detailed tutorial on how to do this yourself, which should pop up up here somewhere. So you can click on that video and watch it if you're interested. I also have a free skin retouching Photoshop action, which will automatically create the frequency separation layers for you. So that is also in the description if you guys wanna download and try this out for yourself. So I've played the skin retouching action and clicking on layer one, I'm going to use my healing brush tool to start retouching the colors of the photo. So I like to start by zooming into the photo and this is where I start my retouching. So with the healing brush tool, you want to make sure that it's set on current layer. Then by holding the auto option key, I sample an area of the skin that I want to brush over onto other areas. So you want to look out for somewhere that's really smooth and just nice to be able to sample across the rest of the skin. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and start painting over the skin here. Something important to keep in mind is to only sample from the lighter areas of the skin to brush over where you want the light to be. And when you're doing somewhere darker, sample where the darker parts of the image are, just so your image doesn't start looking blotchy while you're retouching. So as I mentioned, I have a really detailed tutorial on how I retouch in another video. So I'm just going to fast forward the retouching process here just so this video doesn't end up being like 30 minutes long. Okay, so I've just finished retouching the colors of our photo and I'll show you a before and after of, what's that looking, of what that's looking like. <laughs> so this is the before and this is the after. So what's really great about frequency separation is that on this layer here, you are only working with the colors of the image. So you can blend out all the colors in her skin and it won't affect the texture at all, which helps keep it looking really, really natural. So I feel like it is already going a little bit overboard. Since the photo is already a little bit out of focus from kind of here upwards, there wasn't much texture in the skin to begin with. So I'm actually going to select both the frequency separation layers and drag down the opacity until I'm happy with what it looks like. And the reason that you wanna drag them both at the same time is because if you only drag the second layer, it will actually sharpen your image and start making it look a little bit too JPEG-ish, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's just kind of got those like jagged lines around. So you wanna make sure that you drag the opacity down together. So here's the before and after that I'm happy with. So I'm actually going to duplicate the background layer and merge everything together. And I'm going to make a blank new layer by pressing Command Shift N. And now I'm going to use my stamp tool to finish retouching the rest of the image. So I just like to hit S for a shortcut for the stamp tool. And I pretty much always have my opacity on 20%, flow on 100, and we'll have the sample on all layers. So once again, I'm gonna just zoom in and make my brush a little bit smaller. And we're gonna start by focusing on the bags of the eyes. So the stamp tool actually works by copying the texture and the color of the sampled area from the image. So I'm gonna start by sampling just right underneath the area that we wanna fix up and just slightly start brushing over it here. Sometimes if your brush is a bit small, you can start seeing those really defined lines. So you can just make your brush a little bit bigger just to avoid that from happening.
All right, so we're just gonna zoom out and then bring down the opacity of that layer. Just about there I think is good. So it just brightens up under the eyes a little bit, but it still keeps it looking quite natural. And I'm gonna create another new layer and do the same thing with the other eye. And now I'm gonna go again and fast forward the rest of the stamping procedure <laughs> so you guys can have a look at what else I do with the stamp tool. Okay, so here is what our photo is looking like so far again. I'll just do another before and after of the stamp tool. And as you can see, I just really subtly got rid of and brightened up the shadows that were on the face that were a little bit distracting. So one last thing that I noticed is that there are a few like really, really tiny bumps on the model's skin. So we're just gonna get rid of them really quickly. So let's make a new fresh layer and select our healing brush tool and change the sample to all layers. My tip with the healing brush tool is to only make it just as big as you need it to be. I feel like it ends up looking a lot more natural that way rather than having a massive brush that you sample a huge area from. So I'm just gonna make it quite small and sample right next to the areas that I wanna get rid of. And that's it. While it's important to have your model's face looking beautiful and really natural, it's important not to forget about the rest of the image as well. So we're just going to quickly go in and retouch the arms and the legs with our stamp tool. Another thing that I'm noticing now that all the retouching is out of the way is that the model's hands look a little bit cold and there's also a little red mark which I'll just stamp out really quickly. There we go. <laughs> so in order to fix the cold bluish pinkish hands syndrome which can really stand out in a photo sometimes is to make a new layer, select B for your brush. I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger. We're gonna change the opacity to about 20%. And then we want to sample from an area of the skin that's really warm. So I'm going to try probably about here. And then with a big soft brush, we're just going to paint over the model's hands right here. Just focusing especially on the areas that are really red. And once we've done that, I know it looks terrible right now. <laughs> we're just going to change the layer blending mode to color and then bring down the opacity. So that's kind of added a little bit of warmth to the model's hand and it's not as obvious that she's freezing cold. So let's just clean up our layers again, duplicating the background layer, selecting all and merging. So we can have a look at the before and after so far. I think that's looking really good. I also wanted to try out one more thing in Photoshop with the gradient tool. So I'm gonna once again make a fresh new layer and just select our gradient tool over here. And I want it to be a little bit of a warm yellowish color because I want to try and add a light leak to our photo. So I think maybe something around there would be nice. And I want to make it a radial gradient. So a gradient that's round rather than straight. So let's just drag the gradient and that's looking pretty good already. And I'm just going to change this to a couple of different layer blending modes to see what I like best. I like the screen layer blending mode because it adds like a really kind of fairy tale look to the image by just adding a really bright light to the corner. So I'm going to leave it on screen and then just bring down the opacity so it's not way too distracting. Perfect. And I might move it out so it's not covering her eye as much as well. So just a little bit in the corner over there. But there we have it. That is the final image. Here's one last before and after. So that's the before and that is the after. But I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is basically my workflow for every single image that I edit. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave all your comments down below as I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you all next time. Bye.